Hi everyone, I am Dr. Ilajan Khandelwal, a pathology faculty and in this video we are going to discuss the important images which have been asked in the INICET exam. Now as you all know students that in INICET exams a lot of repeat questions are asked. So what I have tried to do is the images which have been asked in the past 4 to 5 years in the INICET exam. I have uh, taken out those images and those topics are extremely important for your exams, right? So let us quickly revise those images and this is my request to all of you to revise these images and the topics related to them. So the first image is that of asbestosis, right? This has been asked multiple times in your exam, students. As you all can see, can you people see this is a biopsy from the lung or the pleura and can you people see these brownish beaded rod-like structures? These rod-like structures are basically the ferruginous bodies or asbestos bodies. Now you will ask me ma'am what is ferruginous bodies or asbestos body? They are basically asbestos fibers which have been coated with iron, right? Because they have been coated with iron, that is why these bodies will be Prussian blue positive, right? So in the MCQ exam, you can get a question that a, maybe a 50 year old or a 55 year old construction worker or a person who has been working in shipping industry, right? Uh, presents with breathlessness or dyspnea or cough. This is the biopsy from the pleura. What, uh, the, what is the diagnosis, right? Or what is the stain which you will use? So in the first image, which you see here on the left side, I see beaded fusiform rod-like structures, right? These are asbestos bodies. And the image on the right side shows these dumbbell-shaped bodies, which are Prussian blue positive. That is why this is the blue staining, right? Also important is students in the first image on the left side, can you people see this blackish pigment? If I ask you in a lung biopsy, what is this blackish pigment? This pigment is basically anthracosis carbon pigment. There was another question on the carbon pigment which was asked last year in the NEET and INICT exam. Correct? Easy? Let us move to the next image students. I feel this is one of the most important images which have been asked in your INICT, NEET or FMG exam, right? What does this image show? This is actually a spotter. In the center, can you see the cell uh, which is binucleate? It is a large cell. It has a prominent eosinophilic nuclei, right? Now, this cell is actually a Reed-Sternberg cell or a RS cell. And this RS cell is basically seen in Hodgkin's lymphoma, right? Uh, the classical Hodgkin's lymphoma. Now, if I ask you what are the markers for Hodgkin's lymphoma or the Reed-Sternberg cell, the answer is going to be these cells are CD15 and CD30 positive, right? Now, there are two other variants of the students. One is called as a lacunar reed sternberg cell. In this uh, cell students, can you people see what is a lacuna? A lacuna is a clear space, right? Can you people see there is a clear space around the cell, right? There is a binucleate cell. It can be mononucleate also in this case. And there is a clear space which we are seeing here. This is called as a lacunar reed sternberg cell, which is seen in nodular sclerosis Hodgkin's lymphoma. And this is also CD15 and CD30 positive. Right now, another variant of this Reed Sternberg cell is called as the popcorn variant. Can you people see this cell in the center looks like a popcorn? Right, this is also called as the lymphohistiocytic or the L and H variant. Right now, two important points related to this are this is seen in lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin's lymphoma, and the markers for this are CD20 positive, CD45 positive and epithelial membrane uh, antigen positive. This will not be CD15 and CD30 positive. That is by students NLPHL, that is nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin's lymphoma is a non-classical Hodgkin's lymphoma and it is never associated with epstein Barr virus, right? So students, anything and everything related to Hodgkin's lymphoma, please revise just before the MCQ exam, right? If you have a, a question of 
a adult either a 15 to 20 year old person or a elderly person with fever night sweats weight loss cervical lymph node enlargement and such a image is given to you you have to think about hodgkin's lymphoma in your differential diagnosis in the exam i hope this makes sense to you all of you right let us now move to the next image okay this is the electron microscopy can you see this is black and white right now here the red marked cell can you people see it looks like a tennis racket again start imagining like a pathologist right so this is actually a tennis racket cell which also shows these dot 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 uh, things this these are called as a burbeck granules and they are both seen in langerhans cell histiocytosis which is basically the proliferation of langerhans cell right so three four important points regarding lch which you have to remember students one is the tennis racket cells and the burbeck granules very very important but remember they are only seen on electron microscopy what do i see on the light microscopy i see nuclei which have a longitudinal groove and these nuclei are called as the coffee bean nuclei right so a lot of these tumors have got coffee bean nuclei for example brenner's tumor granulosa cell tumor then papillary carcinoma of thyroid and then we have this tumor that is the langerhans cell histiocytosis another important point to take home is the markers which are there these cells or this tumor is cd1a langerin or s100 positive that can be a future exam question very popularly asked in your mcq exams right okay very 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 important students two lymphomas which you have to remember for mcq exams are burkitt lymphoma and hodgkin's lymphoma right so if you have a african child with a jaw or mandibular swelling or some swelling or a mass in the uh, ileocecum or peritoneum or anywhere in the gastrointestinal tract start thinking in terms of burkitt lymphoma right so what are the pointers which you have to uh, notice one there is a history of epstein barr virus infection most common site is the jaw mandible then one thing which is very popularly asked in this translocation the most common translocation in burkitt lymphoma as you can see is t8 is to 14 or cmyc right what is mic students mic is a oncogene and the amplification of this oncogene will lead to burkitt lymphoma right now when i see the uh, image the histopathology it shows a starry sky appearance right can you people see the dark blue colored cells in the background which you see they are the lymphocytes they form the sky and in between can you people see these cells these are actually the histiocytes they look like the stars which are sprinkling or sparkling in the sky that is why this is called as the starry sky appearance very very important image the marker we can use bcl6 uh, as the marker and these cells um, these tumors are extremely chemosensitive remember also remember is they have a very very high proliferation index right what is the marker for proliferation index which we use it is chi67 right okay This image has been asked for the past two years with a history of a child between five to fifteen years of age and with some mitral valve problem. Right? You all know in rheumatic heart disease the most common valve affected is the mitral valve, and the average age of presentation is between five to fifteen years. What is the kind of hypersensitivity which is present in uh, rheumatic heart disease? It is type two hypersensitivity. When we see this image, this is called as the Ashcroft body. which is actually pathognomonic of rheumatic heart disease right now these ashcroft bodies consists of a lot of things lymphocytes and uh, plasma cells and they also consists of anishkau cells what are these anishkau cells students they are the cells which have got slender wavy ribbon like nuclei can you see this orange colored cell which i have marked it has a wavy ribbon like nucleus that is why they are also called as a caterpillar cells right So Ashcroft body will consist of lympho uh, lymphocytes, plasma cells, areas of fibrinoid necrosis, and Anishkau cells. Right? This Ashcroft body is actually pathognomonic of rheumatic heart disease. If you ask me, what are the other 
morphological features of rheumatic heart disease which can also definitely be asked in your MCQ exam. One is bread and butter pericarditis. Again, you all know pathologists are very, very fond of food, right? So, because of some zero, uh, serous exudate which is there, yellowish colored exudate, uh, when I see the heart surface, it looks like a bread and the exudate looks like a butter. So, it is called as bread and butter pericarditis. Then uh, you all know that chronic rheumatic heart disease leads to mitral stenosis. Now, when the heart uh, valve gets stenosed quite a lot, it leads to the development of fish mouth or buttonhole. It leads, uh, sorry, it leads to the development of fish mouth or buttonhole stenosis, right? And lastly, because of constant regurgitation, we have the development of maculum plaques or subendocardial jets. Understood? This is the brief theory of rheumatic heart disease. So, if you have a patient with migratory polyarthritis or cardiac lesion or some subcutaneous nodules or erythema marginatum, that is some skin lesions, start thinking in terms of rheumatic heart disease. Correct? Okay. This image students granuloma. All students, whether you are MBBS or appearing for your um, any entrance exam, you should know how to identify a granuloma and what is a granuloma, right? A granuloma, I always say, is a collection of modified macrophages which are called as epithelioid cells, right? Why are they called epithelioid cells? Because they have an epithelium-like appearance, right? And they have a slipper-shaped nucleus, right? So, in this image, we can see these dark blue cells. They, have a they are the epithelioid cells, right? They are surrounded by a collar of lymphocytes. We can see these dark blue cells in the periphery. They are the lymphocytes and sometimes giant cells. Can you people see these giant cells which are there? They have a fusion uh, or a syncytium of a lot of nuclei, right? If it is a caseating granuloma, you are definitely going to see caseation necrosis, right? And mostly students, granuloma is a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. So, the MCQ can be related to that. They can give you this image and ask you what is the pathogenesis. They can give you the history of TB and ask you something related to it, right? What is the kind of giant cell which we see in TB? It is called Langhans giant cell, right? You should know, please revise what are the granulomatous disorders, right? In which disorders do we see a granuloma? And please revise what are the types of giant cells which are present, right? Then students, this image has also been asked a lot of times. When you see a liver which looks like nutmeg, there is no brown consistent look of the liver. It looks like a nutmeg. Can you see brownish and yellowish spot? So, it looks like a spices which is called as nutmeg. This is called as nutmeg liver. And where do we see this? We see this in chronic venous congestion. So, CVC or chronic venous congestion of liver is going to produce nutmeg liver. Understood? Then students, another very important image from general pathology. This is a topic which has been added in the 10th edition of Robbins. That is why itself it becomes very important. This image has been asked and this image is called as the neutrophil extracellular traps. What are these? They are extracellular fibrillar meshworks which are produced by neutrophil. So, the yellow thing which you see here, this is a neutrophil and it produces a fibrillar meshwork. Can you see this green colored thing? This is a fibrillar meshwork which is produced. Now, this meshwork is produced at the site of infection, right? What is the purpose of this uh, meshwork which is produced? To limit the spread of microbes, right? So, it basically releases a high concentration of antimicrobial substances, correct? Uh, what is important which you have to take home students is that which amino acid is involved in this answer is arginine is involved in the production right so in the last INICT exam there was something related to NETs the question was which of the following is not true about NETs and one of the options was mitochondrial DNA is involved there is no role of mitochondria or mitochondrial inheritance or DNA that is why that was the incorrect statements all the other statements which were given they were correct right
Next, okay. Now, COVID-19 infection, you all know that for the past two years, COVID-19 has created a havoc in our lives. And uh, um, uh, so recently, we have seen that the examiner commonly asks you that if a person has COVID-19 infection, what will be the lung biopsy image show, right? So the lung biopsy in COVID-19 shows diffuse alveolar damage and pink fibrin-like material. Can you see this pink material which is present here? This pink material which is present, these fibrous material which is present, this is actually the uh, basically fibrin, right? And this is called as diffuse alveolar damage. That is what you have to remember, right? Next, okay. This was a spotter which was asked in the previous INICT exam last year. There was a history of a patient with a yellow colored plaque in the urinary bladder. This image was given and they had asked you that what is the diagnosis. The diagnosis is malacoplakia. Can you see these greenish colored, uh, sorry, basophilic bodies uh, which I have marked with green color uh, which are present in this, right? These uh, basophilic concretions, they are basically Michaelis Gutman bodies and these are characteristic feature of a disorder called as malacoplakia, right? Now, when I talk about skin cancer, in the last INICT exam, there was a question that a patient had a lesion, ulcerated lesion on the tip of the nose, right? Biopsy was taken and it showed this kind of image. What is the most likely diagnosis? Now, the image here, can you people see that there are these dark basophilic cells and these cells are arranged in nests. Can you see these nests of basaloid cells? These nests of basaloid cells are seen in what kind of skin cancer? Most likely basal cell carcinoma of the skin, also called as the rodent ulcer. The other thing which you have to remember, sorry, the other thing which you have to remember about basal cell carcinoma is that it shows peripheral palisading. Can you see at the edges, the nuclei are arranged parallelly. It looks as if they are forming a fence. So that is called as peripheral palisading. That is also a very important feature of basal cell carcinoma. Clear? Then students, one topic from GIT which is very important and this disease is becoming very, very common these days and that is called a celiac disease, right? Now, you know a lot of things about celiac disease. Let us quickly revise them. It is called gluten sensitive enteropathy. So, my patient cannot have brow that is barley, rye, oats and wheat. What my patient can have? The patient can have maize and rice, right? This can also be given in the history with the patient having uh, steatoria or foul smelling stools, malabsorption, right? Other thing which can be given is the HLA association, which was asked in the NEAT exam three years back. And that is, this is HLA DQ1 and DQ8 associated, right? What is the skin disorder which can be seen in a patient of celiac disease? Answer is dermatitis herpetiformis. And which type of lymphoma can be seen? Enteropathy associated T cell lymphoma. These are few uh, one liners which you need to know about this disease, right? Uh, let me quickly jump up to the histopathology. When I see the microscopy, three very important features which you have to remember. One, villus atrophy. In this image, can you see villi are not very long, they are blunted or there is villus atrophy. Then you see a script hyperplasia, the crypts are hyperplastic and there is increased number of intraepithelial lymphocytes. And depending upon these three things, we do a scoring system that is called as the MARSH score for celiac disease. Understood? Then students, papillary carcinoma of thyroid. Okay, this image of orphanania nuclei has been examiner's favorite. For the past four years, Three times the INICAT examiner has asked this image, right? Now, when you see papillary carcinoma of thyroid, you see papillae, right? Then papillae have got uh, this nuclei which are optically clear. And these nuclei have been compared to the eye of little orphan Annie. So these are called as orphan Annie eye nuclei. In addition, students, the nuclei here also show longitudinal grooves. And these are called as coffee bean nuclei. Another coffee bean which we just discussed were the nuclei which were seen in Langerhans cell histiocytosis, right? The other things which you also see 
see in this image can you people see orphan anemia and nuclear clearly i want to repeatedly show you this image because this is extremely important in this image you can see beautifully the longitudinal grooves and the nuclear pseudo inclusions in addition to these students papillary carcinoma of thyroid also shows the presence of samoma bodies right so five important things microscopically for papillary cancer are papillae orphan anemia nuclei pseudo inclusions coffee bean nuclei and samoma bodies anything related to thyroid cancers extremely important so please remember right okay another extremely important topic students every year i have seen a question is asked on small brown blue cell tumors or rosettes right either one of these things both of them are related to each other right so small round blue cell tumors are a group of tumors which of course on microscopy shows small round blue cells with scanty cytoplasm as you can see in this image right also what i see in these images are can you see these green colored structures don't you think the tumor cells are arranged around a central lumen like a flower rose like right so these structures are basically called as the rosettes right they are rose like that is why they are called as the rosettes so once the examiner ask you that which of the following i'm so sorry once the examiner asked a question which of the following is not an example of small round blue cell tumor right so i've told you already that small round blue cell tumors of childhood the differential diagnoses are all the blastemal tumors so you have neuroblastoma medulloblastoma hepatoblastoma nephroblastoma which is also called as wilms tumor medulloblastoma right all these blastemal tumors they are small round blue cells retinoblastoma right in addition we have rhabdomyosarcomas lymphomas ewing sarcoma and pnet right so if i talk about inict exam there was a question on ewing sarcoma history of the patient was a 15 year old male child with a bone tumor the image was given and they asked you the diagnosis or they can ask you the translocation in future right so these are the important differential diagnoses which you should know another time there was a question rosettes are not seen in so rosettes are seen in all these small round blue cell tumors anything which is except for them rosettes are not seen right again a very important topic please revise this topic in detail then this image was given as a spotter in your inict exam last time right uh, what do you see here is a shilla dual body can you see a a uh, blood vessel here i can see reddish color rbcs in the lumen there's a layer of cells around it and another layer of cells around it this thing is called as a shilla dual body and shilla dual bodies are seen in yolk sac tumor right so there can be a history of a child with a testicular malignancy think about and the afp and the alpha 1 antitrypsin positivity may be seen think about a yolk sac tumor also students these germ cell tumors whether they are in testis or ovary are very very frequently asked in the mcq exams right so these are the important images which have been asked in the previous year uh, paper students in isi nict exam i hope you benefit from this video thank you so much everyone and all the best